the audience has been set up. That woman back there <laughs> claimed that this is a comedy show. We used to have some dignity between us, but, well, look at them. Look at them, all starving for humor. <laughs> Sad little faces practically <laughs> begging us. Please make us laugh! Make us laugh! <laughs> well, what if we do make you laugh? And laugh and laugh so much the tears roll down your cheeks. <laughs> the mucus runs out of your nose. <laughs> and the drool runs over your chin. This could happen. We are that funny. <laughs> what if we keep going till you're pleading with us? No, that's enough. We can't take it anymore. Please stop. This could happen. We are that funny. And what if we go on relentlessly, mercilessly, until your sides ache, your stomach hurts, and you're farting uncontrollably? <laughs> and worse, your neighbors are farting uncontrollably. <laughs> This could happen. We are that funny. You know what happens then, because once the start farting starts, the laughter doesn't stop. And it wouldn't be long before you wouldn't know whether you were laughing so hard because you're farting so much, or farting so much because you're laughing so hard, and it really wouldn't matter, because eventually half of you would have died laughing, and the other half died farting. <laughs> and Steve and I would be standing alone in this odiferous place, <laughs> thinking to ourselves, that's a shame. They really seem to like us. <laughs> This could happen, but tonight we really like this audience, so we're going to spare you. This evening, we're not going to be that funny. <laughs> I had an appointment with my ears, nose, and throat doctor. It was right smack in the middle of dinner hour. I decided to grab my dinner out, and nearby Wendy's would do just fine. A nice hot cup of chili. I ate and strolled over to the doctor's office. It was crowded. I took the only available seat. As I paged through some boring magazine, my stomach began to rumble, and them spiting words for my ass. I tried to control this passing gas. I knew I couldn't stop it, but at least I could block the sound. My initials aren't SBD for nothing. However, this was no ordinary squeaker. This was a part of unusual magnitude, what one might call a substantial fart. An energetic little boy was running from one person to the next and laughing, then would run back to his mother. Stop bothering people, I heard her say, but the boy was determined to make the rounds. Just at the moment he found me, my fart suddenly exploded. The boy stopped dead in his tracks. Ew, he shouted and ran back to his mother. Mommy, that man, he began. The mother shushed him, but it was too late. The smell was treacherous and overpowering. The little bastard exposed me as a mad farter. One person coughed and left the room, but I was trapped in the corner with this chilly fart the longest wait ever to see the doctor. <laughs> okay, it's time to clear the air. Um, you know, what's really so funny? The air escapes. It's not funny, it's not clever, it's not witty. There's sound and smell. And someone laughs, not because it's funny, but because it's life. And life is funny that way. We live on air. The air escapes. The back crack is an exit wound through which you breathe your last. Not inhalation, but exhalation. Not inspiration, but expiration. The air escapes. It's not funny, it's life, but life is funny that way. <laughs> this is called the Patron Saint of Lost Articles, and it begins with an epigram. St. Anthony, please look around, something is lost and can't be found. <laughs>
St. Anthony, please help me find my keys. I need to get inside the house. I think I left the stove on. It's almost time for my favorite show, and the dog probably has to poop. St. Anthony, I promise to be more careful, so responsible that I'll know how many pennies in the cookie jar. Double, triple check everything I lay down, put in my pocket. I will be so obsessive about where everything is, I will be a complete pain in the ass. St. Anthony, you always have led me to cell phones and cushions, wallets and washers, medications left over a friend's house. You even went out on the limb for me when I couldn't find that damn condom. St. Anthony, it's freezing out here. You wouldn't want me to get frostbite just because I mislaid something. That's not God's will. I don't mind God having a sense of humor, but this is getting serious now. And you have pull with the big guy. St. Anthony, I think I feel anxiety coming on. Don't worry, I won't bother you if I lose that one. See, I'm already making progress. <laughs> Recently I lost something important. Uh, the moment I realized I lost it, went from being important to being tremendously important. You don't know how important a thing is until you lose it. But then, more quickly than I could have imagined, it became unimportant. I guess it's still unimportant, whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, now I remember, and here it is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Gravity keeps getting stronger. My hands weaker. I seem to be dropping everything these days. I guess that's why we have floors. So all we drop doesn't get away. And more importantly, so we have a place to land when we do get away. <laughs> Here, Steve, I've got something important for you. All right, it's good. This starts with an epigram from Lisa Devano who says chalk is an endangered species. Chalk. Save the chalk. Don't let it go the way of Trionosaurus Rex or the Dodo. Everything in the chain has a lake. Wipe out chalk and blackboards will die too. After that, hopscotch. Chalk it up to modern technology. Children will never know the thrill of writing on the blackboard with that wonderful stick of sedimentary carbonate rock. They will also cast a blind stare when you mention clapping erasers. <laughs> <laughs> They're too young to understand. I am, maybe oh, not. Man. <laughs> young people, you think you're inventing great things. Like, for the first time, well, you're not. You just think you're inventing great things. You're not inventing, you're just discovering. And the things you're discovering not as great as you think. <laughs> so you're not inventing great things. You're just discovering things. Things that are less than great. I won't tell you how much less than great they are. I'll let you discover that. <laughs> I remembered when I discovered karma. This is called I remember when karma was a new word. <laughs> The first time I heard the word karma was in 1970 when John Lennon sang, Instant karma's gonna get you. I was 10 years old, didn't know what karma meant. Eventually I learned what karma was. That once foreign word now flowed easily in the mainstream, no longer a strange new age expression. At my first job, Several co-workers wore shirts that simply said, karma. Someone wrote that karma is nothing but the law of cause and effect. What goes around comes around. A sound belief for a cynic. I keep the windows open, allow a cross breeze of karma to blow through. It's going to anyway. <laughs> karma creeps up on you like a slow leak small public men's room with a lone urinal. 
an old man with a slow leak. A thought of youth and impatience. I once had both youth and impatience. It's the wrong one that goes away. <laughs> when I was young and impatient, waiting behind him, I did not know the old man with the slow leak was no less impatient than I. <laughs> Aging rebellion. My passion burns like Centralia, slow and steady, no longer blazes, but never stops simmering. My voice isn't as loud, no longer at rock concert volume, a softer tone, but colored with enough attitude and defiance. <laughs> My intensity goes to bed earlier than it used to, <laughs> but dreams are as vivid as ever. <laughs> Nowadays, we are living in a digital daze, social media craze, virtual reality haze. We are what the computer displays. Whatever we type truly stays, never goes away. Lost on information highway, tangled in the finangled fray, products of the Malay, cell phones outweigh too much of our day. We rush to answer without delay. I'm a dinosaur caught in a gaze, occupying a modern maze, living phase to phase. <laughs> before all this started, before friend became a verb, before unfriend became a weapon, before Google meant anything, way before Google meant everything, information came in bits, zero and one, plus and minus, yes and no. There were answers, not just Googles and Googles and Googles of data. Now you can Google everything and know nothing. Now, you can friend everyone without having a friend in the world. Now, the phrase virtual reality has become redundant because that's the only reality we've got left. All the rest has been tangled, mangled, strangled in the web where the world has been born again. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, there was Google. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious call. My cell phone rests quietly on the end of the table. We share an app. I hear the pre-ring hum, then the old-fashioned ringtone. I turn my head in a daze of mystery. It's my name, my number. How is this even possible? Curiosity beckons me to pick up the phone, but trepidation holds firm like a play in blackjack. Maybe it's an elaborate scan where just answering could cause a problem, or worse, it could be me. <laughs> Caught for a moment in a real life Twilight Zone episode. Besides, I don't feel like talking to me. I leave it in the phone log for show and ask. A conversation not suitable for those afraid of the supernatural. <laughs> it's you, isn't it? Hey, you know, I could put my cell phone aside and pay attention to you, <laughs> but it wouldn't be polite of me to ignore the rest of the world. <laughs>